بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على اشرف الخلق و عز المرسلین سیم خاتمهم و افضلهم و احسنهم حضرت محمد و على اہل بیتہ طیبین طاہرین الذین اذہب عنہم رجز و طہرہم تطہیرا اللہم صلی اللہ محمد و آل محمد السلام علیکہ یا ابا عبداللہ وعلى العرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك منا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعل الله آخر الأهد منا لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميع ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ Indeed the month of Muharram is unique The Islamic lunar calendar is unique Islam is unique All other cultures, all other religions The new year is a time of celebration a time of being joyful, a time where there is huge jubilation and they even go out and celebrate in the streets. Islam on the other hand starts exactly like its kalima to shahada La ilaha illallah first to negate that is the principle, the pillar on which the whole of Islam is based is the kalima to shahada starting with la ilaha illallah. The month of Muharram is in sync with that pillar of la ilaha illallah where we enter a period of mourning, enter a period of remembrance of the Holy Prophet and his family Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam more so in this case Imam Hussein, his family and the entourage Sallallahu Alaihi Alaihi Majma'een and how they were brutally killed and what they fought for was Iqamatul Haqq to establish truth to establish justice and to rebel against, to fight against tyranny, oppression, especially at a time where there was no perception what guidance was, no understanding what guidance or what light is. They were so engulfed that the teachings was misconstrued and misapplied and people then believed in those teachings which is mixed with darkness and to a point where there was deviation to a point where they had no concept of what haq and batil is what truth and falsehood is and here we had Imam Hussein sallallahu alayhi standing up, reminding us, reminding generations to come, reminding people at his time. And the message of Imam Hussein sallallahu alayhi is forever and ever eternal. That voice of Imam Hussein will always be remembered by all the freedom-loving people around the world. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal Jalla Sha'ana, as we said last night, when Allah speaks about Hazrat Musa, Salaamu Alayhi, and Hazrat Musa is most probably one of uh, the very outstanding messenger, the very outstanding Nabi, where Allah has portrayed and exhibited many of his fadl and barakah 
and exhibited his power, whether it was the burning bush, whether it was the staff that turned into a snake, into a big python, by the way, a big snake, because it devoured the others, whether it was putting his hand in his shirt, uh, under his abba, if we can say so, and they turned into, uh, and then he had to put it back, and then his hand was normal again. Whether it was, whether it was confronting Pharaoh, whether it was the plagues, for example, all the plagues, and then the death of the firstborns, and that was, and that was the reason why Pharaoh was so infuriated. Then he went after. The, after the people of Nabi Musa and then pursuing them and yeah, Hazrat Musa alayhi, was confronted with yeah, in front of him is the sea and then Allah split the sea for him. all of these is beautifully exhibited to that he had to he had to confront whatever power there was at the time and Allah enabled him Allah empowered him Allah gave him an authority as Quran was Sultan and Mubin an authority over whoever and whatever he's going to deal with this is Hazrat Musa sallallahu alayhi and then Allah says وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ and remind them Remind meaning should never forget. When we look at Quran, when we look at the anecdotes which Allah has mentioned in the Holy Quran, always refer to ya ulil, ya, uh, where Allah says, Fa'tabiru, and take note of what happened to those people in history. And now as well, we will have to take note of what happened in history, but then apply it and make it relevant in our daily lives. What is the purpose of reminding them, reminding us of the days of Allah as we've mentioned in the first lesson, in the first lecture? What is so significant? about this remembrance. Why? It happened in history, but it's an example of what is to come in other corners of the world, in other situations, and when you can look upon the courage, the valor, the bravery, the faith, the steadfastness of Imam Hussein sallallahu alayhi, then you can take lessons and you can have barakah. And what is this world except that we have to serve Allah? Inna salati wa nusuki, indeed my salah. My devotion, my sacrifice, wa, wa mahiyaya, and my life, how I came in, wa mamati, and my death, lillahi rabbil alamin. It is for Allah. That is our purpose in this life, to serve Allah. And how it was exhibited profoundly was the life and the epic of the battle, the movement, the haraka of Imam Hussein sallallahu alayhi. Now, let us look at how is the event of Ashura, the battle of Karbala on the plain of Karbala, is it merely a remembrance? Or is it a live event? that can be relevant in all situations. And in this case, we know, as the story of Hazrat Ibrahim, of Hazrat Lut, more so in these days, of Hazrat Musa, when you confront those in power, do not capitulate, do not negotiate your faith, your principles. 
Yes, there are some common denominators, but when they hold a gun against your head and there's no other option, know that the sword, we invite the sword. We are not afraid of death. And this was the message for ya ulil albab and take lessons, derive lessons from our Ambiya, Salamullah alayhim, that we should not just look at history as stories, beautiful stories that happened a few thousand years ago. And it's nice in the, and it's nice to tell uh, and to read even to children at night these stories, but we do not translate it into our daily lives. We do not translate those events and make it relevant. Look at the basis. Look at the principle. Look at why certain events happened and how can that be applied in our daily lives. This is a qadiyya. This is not dhikra. This is a live event. This is an, an issue. A relevant, a modern issue. Make it modern. Based on the same principles. And it is not necessarily an annual commemoration, which we do because that is our belief and we have some emotions to the Holy Prophet and the, and the Holy Family, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Salamullah Alayhim Ajmain. And yes, we do and we have and we sincerely love them. But it's not only an event that happened in the past. It is relevant in our lives. So let us look at how do we make Ashura, the movement of Imam Hussein, Salamullah Alayhim, and the event of uh, the, yeah, the Battle of Karbala, the patience, the fortitude, the steadfastness, the sacrifice, the love, the loyalty, the hunger, the thirst, the spilling of blood. How do we derive lessons from that? And may we look at the advice of our Imma of our Imams, holy Imams, Salamullah Alayhim, and look at their advice. What they wanted based on Ayah of Quran, وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ Allah And remind them of the days of Allah. Indeed the day. One of the days of Allah, Azza wa Jal Jal Sha'ana, is the day of Ashura. It's the day when the Holy Prophet said about Imam Hussein, Hussein minni wa ana min Hussein. Hussein is from me. That part we understand beautifully. That's chronological and that's biological, yes. But the part where the Holy Prophet said, Wa ana min Hussein, this is a higher. This part is a part which is not 3D. We need another consciousness. We need another understanding to understand this where the Holy Prophet said that I am from Hussein, salamullah alayhi. The Holy Prophet himself enlivened the memory that didn't happen yet chronologically during the time of the Holy Prophet. But he, he encouraged and admonished and told Haba and Ahl al-Bayt, Salamullah alayhim, what would happen on the plain of Karbala and his grandson will be sacrificed, will be slaughtered like a ram. Let us look at how Imam Salamullah Allah and Imams, the words of Imams are exactly the words of the Holy Prophet. They're just an extension, illa anna, except there is no Prophet after the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. But divide, but divine guidance when it comes to Hidayah in Allah did not stop. At the day when the Holy Prophet وسلم, closed his blessed eyes. And then all of a sudden, your divine guidance was, was left. 
And Allah has left us and left it up to the ummah, up to the people to decide. No! How can we think like this about Allah? Divine guidance continue up till until today. And let us look at the advice of our Imma Salamullah Alay. Imam Zainul Abideen Salamullah Alay was the first Imam after Imam Hussein was killed, where he saw how his father and brothers and nephews were slaughtered in front of him, were butchered in front of him. And here, Imam Zainul Abideen was the one and his sister, Hazrat Zainab, salamullah alayha, to encourage the people about the ta'asisul ma'atim al husayniya that people should come in groups and in gatherings and they should remember and do the matams, do the morning, recite those poetries, etc. that uh, to remind people and we have written in all languages and eulogize the epic of Imam Hussein Salamullah Alayhi. And this is one of the advice of our Imams to enliven the event of Karbala, not to make it only a yearly remembrance. A yearly commemoration that it, it's actually confined in ritualistic practices, only a yearly thing. No, no, it's to enliven. When we remember what happened to the Holy Prophet and his family, and we, there is expression of emotions, immediately. You might think in situations where you are in minutely in small situations like that of Imam Hussein or any of his entourage, salamu alayhim that you may act Husseini. You may act lovingly, kindly. You may act steadfast when it comes to principles and fundamentals which we're supposed not to negotiate away or shy away from. Be proud on who we are. Stand your ground when it comes with haq. Stand our ground. But at the same time, we are compassionate and kind and gentle and loving towards people and generous towards people. But at no point will we ever compromise on principles and fundamentals. So when we look at many ahadith, where we find that, um, that Imam Rida alayhi, or Imam, Imam Baqir, where he says, Look at one hadith. Rahmallah abdan ijtama'a ma'al akhir fatadhakaru fi amrina. May Allah have mercy upon one who gathers with others and they enliven. Fatadhakaru. And they remember and they enliven our remembrance. Fa inna thalithuhuma. Then the third of them, if there is two, the third of them is an angel, a malik, yastaghfiru lahuma, seeking forgiveness from Allah. Azza wa Jal Jalla Sha'ana. Just look again at another hadith of Imam Sadiq, salamullah alayhi, where he says, Ya Fadil, Ya Fadil, tajlisuna wa tatahaddathun, oh Ya Fadil, you're sitting here and we are talking, then he says, Rahimallah man ahyu amruna. May Allah have mercy upon the one who enliven. This from Hayat, who enliven our remembrance, meaning make it alive, meaning bring it to life. Don't let it be there only in history, but bring it here forward in our day to day lives where it becomes 
a qadiyya and not a dhikra. Dhikra literally in English means remembrance, commemoration. But qadiyya means it is a live event. It, it, it is current affairs. Let us make it like that. Let us make it current. Let us make it live in our lives. And when we look at that is one of the ways how to enliven the remembrance of, of Ahl al-Bayt, salamullah alayhim, especially the event of Karbala, as Allah says, وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ And remind them of the days of Allah, Azza wa Jal Jal Shana. That was number one. There are many ahadith which we can, which because of time, which we're not going to mention here, but that is in our, in our Kutubu Riwayat. Number two, how do we enliven the remembrance of Imam Hussein? And beautifully, now during these days of Muharram, during the days of Arba'een, the 40 days of Imam Hussein, Salamullah alayhi, let us show to the world which pilgrimage is the biggest in the world. Which, which religion? Which culture? There is no pilgrimage in the world which is bigger than that of Imam Hussein. More so the days of Arba'een. Have you ever heard of approximately 20 million people in Karbala. Which religion can bring this? This is Ijlalan li Rasulillah. This is honoring Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ziyarat Imam Hussein. It happens throughout, throughout the year. More so during the month of Muharram and, and furthermore, just 40 days later, during Arba'een, we, we have Zaireen, those pilgrims who go to Karbala and Najaf and Samara and Kadimain, where Ahl al-Bayt is buried. Have you ever heard you want to know how this is in la how this is a, how this is a current affair? This is current. Which religion, which belief can feed 20 million people free of charge? Which, which? Bring us any religion on this planet except that of Rasulullah wa Ahl al-Bayt, salamullah alayhi. Which? There isn't. Except Imam Hussein, salamullah alayhi. And we have many ahadith that we have in, in the kutub of ahadith where they encourage the ziyarat of Shuhada al Karbala or Hazrat Zainab there in Damascus. Many ahadith. فَإِنَّ زَائِرَ الْحُسَيْنَ As Imam Sadiq says, let us just quote one. فَإِنَّ زَائِرَ الْحُسَيْنَ لِيَنْقَلِبُوا مَا عَلَيْهِ مِنْ ذَنْبِ That indeed, the, indeed the pilgrim of Imam Hussein, those who visit the graves of Imam Hussein, will find that in doing so, they will wipe out it were your sins will be wiped away by Allah Azza wa Jal Jal Sha'ana. This is just one of the blessings of the Zaireen. And we don't, inshallah, don't want to go even further. There are many ahadith to that effect. Let us look at number three. How do we enliven the remembrance of Imam Hussein? And that is Sajda. We have in one rak, in one salah, seventeen. We have seventeen rakat, and in each rakah, 
you have two sajdas. And it is highly, extremely recommended that we prostrate on the ground in which the blood of Imam Hussein was spilt. And that was done by and advised by none other than Imam Zainul Abideen Salamullah Alayhi. Remind us of what happened to Imam Hussein where his blood was spilt there on the ground of Karbala. Indeed, this is, let me tell you, when people go on Hajj, and now when they come back from Hajj, the tradition is, what was the tradition? Find this anywhere in the world. The tradition and the belief is when you come back from Hajj, you don't wash your clothes in washing machine. The tradition is to wash it with your hand and that water, that dirty water, so that you can throw it in your yard for barakah because you were in the land of Makkah and Medina. Now what about Imam Hussein sallallahu alayhi? This is where we have, when we enliven in our salah two rak'ats, we make sajda on Turbatul Hussein to remind us of what happened. May. And then, number four, on many occasions, we have, we, we have our funerals, other events, when we have conferences, when we have books, when we have, when we have political movements, and many of those movements, etc., they've based it on the haraka, on the movement of Imam Hussein. Indeed, Imam Hussein became a beacon of light. And not only a beacon of light, the ship of the ship of salvation. Not only that, but whoever is not boarding it, they won't be guided. Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah wa ala al arwah allati hallat bi fina'ik. Alayka minna salamullah abadama baqeed wa baqiyya layla wa nahar. Let us just remind us one of the shuhada and he is Muslim bin Aqeel whom Imam Hussein sent to go and assess, to go and find out how's the situation in Kufa. Because Imam Hussein was on his way already from Medina to Makkah and from Makkah on his way to Kufa and then Karbala and then Imam Hussein received thousands and thousands of letters. And when, when Muslim Ibn Aqil arrived in Kufa, it was lots of celebration and people pledged allegiance to Imam Hussein by his representative, and that is Muslim Ibn Aqil. Then Ibn Ziyad, the governor, was appointed. He was sent to go and quell resistance, to quell any dissent against the rule of Yazid. And then we had that he had several maneuverings in order and, and many spies to go and spy and gain information about what's happening on the ground. And the people's hearts were, Imam, were with Imam Hussein and Muslim bin Aqil was hosted by many. And then he went to the house of, of Mukhtar al thaqafi he was a prominent member and follower of Ahl al-Bayt during the time of Imam Ali sallallahu alayhi and Mukhtar al-Thaqafi. He hosted Muslim bin Aqil and then when the situation became a bit too heavy and the situation became where there was a lot of spies and a lot of soldiers went around and the house of Mukhtar al-Thaqafi was known. So Muslim bin Aqil decided not to be in this house because this house is known. So he went to the house of Hani bin Urwa. Old man, well-respected member of the clan also. And then eventually the news reached, reached the governor that Muslim bin Aqil is in the house 
of Hani bin Urwa. Then soldiers were sent to go and apprehend, to go and arrest. We find that one by one, that 18 and 4,000 members who, who have flocked around Muslim bin Aqil, one by one they fell by the wayside. And eventually, when Muslim bin Aqil was captured, Eventually, he found himself alone, no one to support, no one to help. And then he wanted someone to go and inform Imam Hussein not to come to Kufa. The situation has changed. We see this loyalty to the movement, this love which he had for Imam Hussein. Then, Ubaidullah bin Ziyad ordered that Muslim bin Akil must be killed. They took him up to the building, up to the palace. They on top, so they beheaded him. And then they threw the body, his body down on the ground as a symbol of this is what will happen to resistance. This is what happened to the followers and the lovers of Imam Hussein Salamullah alayhi. As-salamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. Wa ala al-arwaah al-lati hallat bi finaik. Alayka minna salamullah abada ma baqeed wa baqiya layla wa nahar. Wa la ja'ala Allah akhir al-ahda minna li ziyaratikum. As-salamu ala al-Husayn. Wa ala Ali ibn al-Husayn. Wa ala awlaad al-Husayn. Wa ala ashaab al-Husayn. Jami'ahu. ورحمة الله وبركاته